going on everybody this is Jeff with living in Arizona and today we're going to make a video to discuss why I personally believe Phoenix Arizona has the highest standard of living in America some of you are already gonna roll your eyes and say oh heck no some of you are gonna say yeah actually I was thinking the same thing and so anyways that's what this video is gonna be about we're gonna check it out if you're new here you can subscribe to living in Arizona and we've got many videos you can go through here and check out any of the playlists where we talk about all types of different uh, subjects, Phoenix and Tucson, Phoenix Nightlife, all that good stuff, Scottsdale, Arizona Wildlife, and Suburbs, Mesa, etc. So let's go ahead and get this going so that you guys can see why I chose Phoenix to move here and or move back here after having traveled around the world and the United States to find what I believe to be the best fit. And so before I do that, I want to share with you guys some Census Bureau data. So uh, this is straight off the government website. So they'll say something like the fastest growing city in America. But the problem is with that, they're doing it off a of percentage. So let's say that Bismarck, South Dakota is growing. Uh, let's say it went from 80,000 people to 85,000 people that percentage might be so it grew 5,000 people but it had a larger percentage ratio of growth but that does not mean that it is growing in the largest volume of population and if you actually looked at who's got the highest population volume and growth in America you'll find out Phoenix is the fastest second fastest growing city right behind San Antonio Texas so San Antonio might come in there with a high quality, a high standard of living. I mean, you could really start comparing San Antonio and Phoenix real hardcore and really drill that down, and we can do that. But I'm making the case for Phoenix. I've been to San Antonio. It's a beautiful city, and they do have a beautiful river walk, and i got positive things to say about San Antonio. I like it. But we're making the case for Phoenix here, so I'm going to stick with stick to my guns here and say Phoenix, yeah. And look at this. I mean, this is the numeric increase. That means 24,208. 24,000 people moved to San Antonio. That was the largest population numer numeric increase, followed by Phoenix, just under 200 people less, right? I mean, 200, 200 less people moved to Phoenix. So Phoenix is really up there with San Antonio as the fastest growing city in America, not by this per percentage stuff where you start talking about, you know, percentages that I don't think is really relevant. Anyway, rant over on that, right? So you could see... Overall, Phoenix is a larger city than San Antonio. Now, why is it? Why is it that so many people are leaving all these different places to move to Phoenix? Because it is that good. It's a brand new city. Phoenix has new infrastructure everywhere. You go out east, everything's old, it's decrepit, it's crumbling. Phoenix, new highways, new buildings, new homes. New homes are a big thing, and they're not going to break the bank. I mean, you don't have to live in these houses that were built in the 1960s like you would get in San Diego. You move to San Diego, you're getting homes that were built in 1960, and you're paying two times the amount of price that you would be getting in Phoenix. Sure, a city like San Diego might have, um, you know, have better weather, have more things to do in terms of having an ocean and just that kind of culture, but at the end of the day, the standard of living is going to be less because you've got to make a lot more money to keep up. Everything is just marked up 10% higher on groceries, uh, double the price in rent or in mortgage, and those kind of things can wear you out. So yes, there might be better places to live if you can afford it, but the standard of living in Arizona for 500 for the same price that you would get a, a, a shanty, you know, kind of like 1960s build in San Diego and say Pacific Beach, for that same price in Arizona or in Phoenix, you're going to be getting a really great house for that same price. Big old house, big old yard, beautiful, brand new, all that stuff. You can get an older build too, but so that's my case on that. Now, another thing that I want to say that makes it so amazing, and I think this is also to our credit, whereas like I said, there might be other places that have, you know, overall there might be more things to do or, or whatnot. They don't have extreme heats like here in Phoenix like we get, but we still get um, 296 days of sunshine. That's pretty valuable in this day and age. You talk to a lot of people, hey, do you prefer cold or hot? Majority of people are saying, I am so over the cold. I will take extreme heat over extreme cold any day of the week. Chiberia, right? Now, why is that? Well, it's easier to escape the extreme heat in Arizona than it is to escape the extreme cold in, in say, Chicago. Why is that or how is that? Well, 
because we live in this new world where they have air conditioners, you know, yeah, you might step out of the office that is air conditioned and then go walk to your car where it's kind of hot, 110 in the summer in July, right? That's the extreme. That's the most extreme, right? 115. But you go straight into your car, you turn on the air conditioner, you, you, you were probably in covered parking, you had one of those sun reflectors in there, you turn on the AC, within three minutes you're cooling down and you're good to go. So yeah, air conditioning will help. You go into any of these Targets, Walt malls or whatever, they're all air conditioned. So you, it's a lot of living indoors out here in the extreme heats, but at night it's hot. It still gets hot. Like, I mean, we're, and we're talking the extremes, right? July, August, June, right? But for the most part, that sun is valuable. It's a commodity. It's a wealth. You have that much sun, that's, you're wealthy to some people because you've got that much sun. Just talk to anyone in Russia. Okay. So number, number 10 thing, uh, is or the, the other thing that I want to talk about is the up and coming uh, technology and the and the opportunities that are being developed here. This is Belmont in Arizona. Bill Gates is building the smart city, and I consider that to be an interesting aspect because there's a lot of because it's new and there's opportunity to develop. We're cutting edge out here, so Phoenix is cutting edge with the jobs. That's why we're a big tech industry. We have Tesla's electric car competition out here. I can't think it's called Lucid. But we have Lockheed Martin, um, we have a Boeing facility out here, we have Raytheon. I mean, this is a cutting edge technological city and because of that, you know, I'm not saying we're Silicon Valley, but if you want to go pay the price to live in Silicon Valley, by all means, go do it. But most people are saying, hey, $3,200 for a studio apartment, I'll go take that, I'll go back to Phoenix and pay $1,700 a month and have a big old house. And if I want to go to San Francisco for a weekend, I'll buy two, two tickets for me and my girl to go up there for $250 round trip. So you're still saving money, even, even if you factor in, you know, so it's, it's a hop, skip, and a jump away to go to San Diego, San Francisco. We're talking an hour and a half flight to San Francisco, 45 minutes to San Diego. Driving over to San Diego is just five and a half hours away, four hours away, depending on how fast you drive. So, you know, you're within... You're within range to these places if you really need to just get away. We talked about Mexico yesterday and um, going to the beach down in Rocky Point, which is up and coming. It's like a, it's kind of, it's got a beachfront like they have in Cancun. It is hot in the, in the extremes, right? But warm water, you don't get that kind of warm water in a lot of places in the Pacific. You get it in the Gulf of Mexico, but you get the point, right? So another thing that I, I like to point out is 21 things you need to know about Phoenix before you move here. And I'm using this because of move to, uh, dot com. They, they put out a pretty good article. Phoenicians know, uh, they're, know, they know that there's nowhere cooler than Chase Field. So having four sports teams, you have the Arizona Diamondbacks, Arizona Cardinals. Diamondbacks have a beautiful stadium, stadium, Chase Field, and the Cardinals have one beautiful stadium, State Farm Field, formerly known as University of Phoenix Stadium. That's pretty valuable. The Phoenix Suns are about to upgrade and get a new state uh, arena. The Suns haven't had a heyday since Steve Nash, right? But the point is, is that that's pretty cool. You also have the hockey team, Arizona Coyotes. Then they talk about some of the wildlife out here being pretty unique and, and interesting. The Coyotes getting lulled to sleep if you're living in the rural areas. Um, you know, and we also have a really good food scene. I think that's important to point out. As they point out here on Phoenix Mag, 50 best Arizona restaurants. So, I mean, you could get all types of different foods. It's a food, you're not going to, you're, if you're a foodie, Especially if you're in the metro in the metro area, right? Gilbert, uh, Scottsdale. I mean, you're gonna you're not gonna skip a beat, miss a beat with any of the food and some of the best Mexican food you're gonna get in all of America. And you know, you can see there's lots of different food options. Just great food. If you're a food person, food is life, right? That's what they say. So I mean, you could go on this PhoenixMag.com and look at this article: 50 best restaurants to see what they recommend. I'm also going to make a, a video about the best restaurants in Arizona here soon, but I wanted to point this out because yeah, I think it's important. So what it's like to live in Phoenix, you can come on here to realestate.usnews. They do have quick stats. They gave their opinion on it. I think it's only fair if, if the Jeff Index versus the US News Index but then again, they don't look at the, see, I'm going off of Jeff's consciousness. I've been around the country and I've been to some of these places and some of their places, they'll have one or two. I'll be like, yeah, no, I'm not going to live 
in, in these places, this is not where I want to be. This is not the best quality of life. For example, Austin, Texas, it's cool, but I don't really like the humidity and I don't think it's up to snub. I don't think it's where it needs to be to even be better than Phoenix. So if I had to choose, would I move to Phoenix or Austin? I would take Phoenix. I mean, we're talking about their list of number one, right? Colorado Springs, Colorado, yeah, no thanks to all that snow. Just not into it. Denver, same thing. Des Moines, yeah, I've been to Des Moines, heck no. That is not the best place to live. I, I mean, yeah, they've got a great food scene and they've got greenery, but no, I'm not trying to freeze for five to six months out of the year. No thanks. Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas, it's like, why did, how did Arkansas rank as the worst state to live by some accounts? And then <laughs> Fayetteville all of a sudden comes up as number five in the nation ahead of Phoenix. So these lists can be skewed. They're, they're not going off of consciousness. I don't think they're going off of these indexes. I'm going off of Jeff's conscious index, and I'm also using data to, to also form that. But for the most part, it's a conscious opinion, having traveled around to many places in the United States. Now, you've got 4.5 people in the, or million people in the metro area. It's a young city, average median age, 36, low unemployment rate, 4.2%. Even if they say it's higher than some places, I still think that if you need to get a job in Phoenix, not a problem. You're going to be able to find a job in Phoenix. Your 18-year-old kid's going to be able to find a job. You're going to be able to find a job. Your wife's going to be able to find a job. There is an abundance of jobs here and we have a strong economy look at that low rent price 989 dollars a month go good luck trying to find that in california say right very reasonable median home price in uh um for, to buy a home and forty seven thousand dollars a year that's pretty good 86 degrees average temperature eight inches of rainfall average commute time that is a little bit high 26 minutes that can be a little bit painful but let's go ahead and look at Austin and say and compare it to Austin, right? Because they don't even have San Antonio on there. But you can see the home price is a little bit more in Austin. The median rent is a little bit more in Austin. Granted, they have a 1% better unemployment rate and they have a little bit younger people. It's a smaller city. It's about one third, one about half the size of Phoenix. A little bit cooler. Um, same kind of commute time. So. Uh, that's just something to compare, consider. Let's just compare it to Denver since we're on track to do this. 2.7 metro, 2.7 million in the metro, same age, a little bit lower unemployment. So maybe, you know, I guess that could be said. Commute time's higher, um, but these average temperatures, I'm sorry, I don't care. I, I'm not trying to... <laughs> it, and it does get extremely hot near uh, Colorado. So, I mean... It gets real cold, like bone chilling cold for five months out of the year. And then it, and then when it starts to warm up, it gets really hot in Denver. Like they can have heat waves. So I'm just saying, uh, it's the way I look at it is, is like that. And then so basically, if you just wanted to see some of the other fastest growing cities by percentage, I mean, we're talking metro areas, fastest growing cities. You could see Boise, Idaho. That's the fastest growing city, but it's way smaller it didn't grow in numeric value as much as uh, Phoenix Metro, but it's still growing Seattle also. But I've been to Seattle. Seattle's nice. If you're going to move to Seattle, get ready for the green. You got to love green. You got to love rain and you got to love cold weather because Seattle gets a lot of that. And again, it's a beautiful city, but too cold for me. Dallas, I don't know. <laughs> Dallas is all right. I, I, I just don't. I like the. I think the people in Dallas are cool. I like the people in Dallas. Dallas, Dallas population has pretty good situation. Florida, not too bad, but it's overpopulated, very densely populated. So, anyways, I just wanted to make this video to go over all of the important things that I think you should know about when you're moving here and take a look at all this stuff. You know, you've got check out some of the resources: Phoenix Business Journal, Top Ten U.S. Cities on Market Watch. Check out the video we made about the. Uh, Belmont smart city and I'll put a link there um, but you know we've got a lot of opportunities here in Arizona for people who are young and motivated and ready to take it to the moon we're cutting edge it's got lots of sunshine and I think that's important that's why people come here and if you saw my video yesterday about the things to do you're not gonna have a shortage of things to do in Arizona that's for darn sure so thanks to everyone who's been liking these videos and subscribing and we'll see you next time